All right, so we are now at part four of the appendicular skeleton lecture, uh, starting with tibia and then finishing all the way out with phalanges. Uh, tibia is this ginormous shin bone that you have. It's the big one. You have a big one and a little one. Okay, the tibia is palpable. If you feel the front of your uh, of your lower leg, you can feel the tibia. There's not a whole lot of space between. There's not a whole lot of like muscle or skin between that and the outside world, which is why it hurts so bad when you bang your shins into stuff. This tibia is the one that makes the knee joint as well. So it connects up with the femur right here, and those condyle connect. There's condyle we discussed in the last video on the femur, the lateral and medial, but there's also lateral and medial condyle on the tibia. Okay, They are these indentions here and here. Now remember that medial means close to the midline, lateral means far away. Easy to, way to remember which one's which is to find the fibula. This is the little bone right here, the fibula. Easy way to remember that it uh, is because it has an L. Fibula. Think L for lateral, also L for little. So if you find this one, you'll know where the lateral side is. So this indented space here at the top, oh, we rotate it here. This indented, this flattened space right here is the lateral condyle, which makes this one the what, folks? The medial condyle. The medial condyle. Now, there is a raised ridge. Now, this metal piece isn't supposed to be here. There's a raised ridge of a whole bunch of little bumps and stuff like that here at the top. Those, this whole section almost looks like a mountain range. It's called the intercondylar eminence. Okay. Intercondylar because it is in between the condyles, this raised part right here. And eminence because it's something that is raised above something else. I've heard royalty referred to as his eminence or her eminence. Something that is raised above something else's position. So normally though in the knee, there is a big thick cartilage pad that sits on top of this to cushion this joint so that it doesn't have so much, uh, so much pressure in it. It sh absorbs shock and whatnot. Does anybody know what that's called? It's the same name as this little deal, like when you pour water into a uh, into a graduated cylinder and it does this action. Is it is the meniscus, right? It's really easy to tear too if you twist your knee the wrong way, but it absorbs a tremendous amount of shock there. So there, you know, you're not seeing it here, but it rests directly on top of these two condyle. Now the eminence is important because there are some cruciate ligaments that attach to this. You've heard of the ACL before, anterior cruciate ligament and PCL, which is what? Posterior, Posterior cruciate ligament. Okay, And there's the medial and lateral collateral ligaments that are on the outside here that kind of support the knee. If you think about all the stuff we ask the knee to do when you're moving around and changing direction, it needs a lot of support. So those are the first three here, lateral, medial, and intercondylar eminence. Now, when I, if you palpated or felt the front of your shin bone, you felt this thing. See, the, the tibia is almost like, from a cross section, is like triangle shaped. The back of it is flat, and the front of it kind of comes to a point like that. And this ridge, you can feel all the way up and down the front of your leg. That is the anterior border. It actually is called the anterior border, sometimes called the anterior crest. I've actually heard the term anterior margin as well. It's all the same thing. It's that ridge right in front here of the tibia. Now this next one, tibial tuberosity is wicked important, okay? Because all of the muscles of the quadricep attach to this, okay? And you may be able to feel this bump right here sticking out. Uh, go below your kneecap and feel below the squishy part there. Go all the way down and you might feel a little bump sticking out right there. That is the tibial tuberosity. Its significance is that every single muscle of the quadricep, all those big muscles of the quad, they all attach to this bump right here. So this is what allows you to straighten your leg, is that those muscles attach to this thing here. 
So that's the tibial tuberosity. Now, let's go down to the distal end of this bone by your foot. And you have those two ankle bumps, one on the inside and one on the outside. Both of them are called malleolus. The one that's on the inside here is called the medial malleolus because it's, it is on closer to the midline, and that's the one that's on the tibia. Guess what this one's called, gang? Lateral, Lateral malleolus because it's further from the midline. Now, that brings us then to the fibula. And though there are markings on the fibula, the only one I asked you to recognize on the sheet here is the lateral malleolus. But see, together they make this nice little container, if you will, this little holder for the foot so that it fits in and has good stability on both sides. That's why if you break your fibula, you won't be able to walk. Even though it's much, much smaller than the tibia, that's what supports your foot on that other side to keep it balanced there. So lateral malleolus and the little bone here, again, is the fibula. Okay. Now, the bones of the wrist were called carpal bones. Carpal bones. I gave a little, you know, way to remember it. You can smash your hand in a car door, so hand is car. You step in tar. Either way, terrible day. But uh, these are the tarsal bones. They make up about half your foot. So they go from here all the way back to here. So these are the tarsal bones. Technically, they'd consider them bones of the ankle because, you know, carpal bones are bones of the wrist, but these make up almost half of your foot together. And of those, there were really only two tarsals that I wanted you to know. One is this one here, right below the tibia, that is called the talus. And the talus is the one that connects to the tibia here. So tibia, talus, talus, tibia. And the other one that is really important is this gigantic one back here. Look at this guy. This is called the calcaneus. The calcaneus is your heel bone. It's this enormous bone back here. There's a huge tendon that's attached to your calf muscles that attaches to the calcaneus. What's the tendon called? Achilles, Achilles tendon is its nickname. Its real name is the calcaneal tendon because it attaches to this right here. Uh, if, if that snaps or it, 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 you can't walk, they have to surgically repair it, put it back together. It's tough. I had a friend that was playing basketball and cut the wrong way, and he snapped it in half. I, I didn't know it was possible. Ouch. All right. So that's the calcaneus. It's your heel bone. Moving along here, the bones of the foot, uh, just like you have bones of your hand, these right here are known as metatarsals as opposed to metacarpals. And they're numbered the same way the other ones are. These are numbered from the big toe in. So this is one, two, three, four, and five. And then uh, attached to those are your toes. And toes are called phalanges. And the singular again for this is the word phalanx, P-H-A-L-Y-N. X phalanx and just as a refresher from the fingers what do we call the one that's the furthest away from the body this is the distal phalanx this one is the middle. proximal phalanx and in the middle is the middle. middle phalanx and the only one that doesn't have a middle phalanx is the big toe just like your thumb does not and so that will get us to the end of part four.